Um, it's great to see so many people here today, and I'm pleased that you're uh, in all, mostly interested in ionising radiation, which is uh, good for my group. Um, so I'm here to talk about uh, radiation dosimetry um, and give you an overview to the work that we do. So I'll start just by telling you about the group, who we are, what we cover, and then I'll tell you a bit about our facilities, focusing mainly on our, our new clinical LINAC, because coming from IPEM, I imagine that's what most of you will have most interest in. Um, and we will be seeing that later on on the tour. Tell you a little bit about our primary standards and concentrate um, on our absorbed dose uh, primary standard calorimeter. And then as Martin said, I'll tell you a bit about our dosimetry chain, so how we get traceability out to measurements um, that you make in, in the hospital, <coughs> in, particularly in radiotherapy. And the services that we offer that would then cover um, this dosimetry chain. And I'll finish up by telling you some of the more exciting research projects we have underway at the moment. So the Radiation Dosimetry Group at MPL is 22 members of staff working in radiation dosimetry, one of whom actually has completed a two-year secondment to Royal Surrey County Hospital, and he's actually now a state-registered clinical scientist. And we also have a joint position between NPL and Royal Surrey County Hospital, um, again with a clinical scientist. And so we're, we're uh, hopefully very aware of, of the needs of uh, the radiotherapy community. Dosimetry is literally measuring dose, and we actually cover a dose range starting from the low-level doses found in radiation protection, going through radiotherapy doses, and all the way up to the dose levels, so thousands of grays, dose levels of sterilization, so for example that you'd find in industrial sterilization parts for uh, <coughs> plant, for medical instruments. So as well as maintaining UK primary standards dosimetry, we, uh, we do this by covering absorbed dose standards such as calorimeters. We have standards for quantity of air kerma um, and do a lot of iron chamber measurements <coughs> for this. There's a chemical dosimetry group as part of the group as well at MPL and they're interested in uh, well, chemical dosimeters such as what's called alanine which, uh, in which a chemical reaction takes place um, when it's irradiated and then we're then able to infer the dose by reading that out. And there's also a mathematical modelling part of the group. So this part of the group uses Monte Carlo techniques to model the action of uh, ionising radiation. And this can determine correction factors to, that are needed for, for some of our measurements and also can be used to predict expected uh, out outcomes of dose. So moving on to our facilities, our, I guess the facility that well, I'm most proud of at the moment is our new clinical LINAC. Um, we have what's called an, it's an elector, that's the manufacturer, and a synergy model, LINAC. Um, for those of you that don't know, there's two really big manufacturers of LINACs, Elector and Varian. And uh, we went with Elector because they were able to fulfil our criteria of having seven photon energies. So for those of you that have seen a LINAC before, you'd probably recognise this as looking <coughs> fairly like what you'd have in your centre. However, a typical hospital machine can't have more than three photon energies. So we've managed to have seven covering 4 to 25 MV. So that's to ensure we can cover the full range currently available clinically in radiotherapy <coughs> centres in the UK. And they, we can only have three energies at a time on the LINAC, but we can change between sets of three by changing the flattening filters in the LINAC head, and we also change the hard drive that runs the computer. We've got 10 electron energies, and like a standard clinical machine, we've got a multi-leaf uh, collimator, we've got portal imaging, um, a cone beam, CT, so for taking an image of the patient um, in three <coughs> dimensions when they'd be placed um, on the couch. We're able to do record and verify like in a clinic, and we also have a pinnacle treatment planning system, uh, which we can use to plan treatments. Um, one thing I should add at this point is we don't and will not have any patients here at all. Um, so we're not, to, we're not geared up for that at all. It's just a, a research site. So just to give you a little overview of some of the other facilities we have here, we've got um, a Theratron, which is a Cobalt 60 unit. Now these aren't used clinically in the UK anymore, um, but they are still used in third world countries, I believe. Um, but it's useful for us because obviously Cobalt 60 being radioactive is unstable however the beam we get is stable so to speak um, so it gives a, we, we know what beam to expect and it's very good for our reference measurements and our calorimetry so uh, that's why we have the, the therotron we have a maintenance unit containing a number of radioactive sources which are done for radiation protection applications 
And we also have um, a high dose rate brachytherapy afterloader, which we use for our brachytherapy calibration service and also research we do into absorbed dose standards for brachytherapy. We've got both industrial and diagnostic x-ray sets. And for the chemical dosimetry side, we have a couple of high dose irradiators, which again for the high doses used in the industrial applications. And we also have an electron paramagnetic resonance spectrophotometer, which is used to read out the alanine dosimeters. So I'd just like to show you a little bit about um, our current absorbed dose primary standard, which hopefully you should be able to see on the tour to the LINAC, because it's in there at the moment. And this is a graphite calorimeter. So the way this works is we're looking at measuring the energy from radiation, and we're essentially measuring it in the form of how it, a, a temperature rise. So th there's a, a graphite body around. I don't know if I have a laser pointer. I don't think I do, so I'll have to wave my arms a bit. So we have... <coughs> The dark area here is a graphite core, and within that are thermistors, and there's a graphite body around the calorimeter. And when ionizing radiation interacts in the core and deposits its energy, we can measure a temperature rise. So that was traditionally how we used the calorimeter. But uh, more recently, we now operate it in what's called isothermal mode. So we keep the temperature constant. These are showing temperatures within the calorimeter. So we, we keep the temperature constant. And at the point where we want radiation to come on, there's a number of heaters in the calorimeter. We turn off the heater, you can see the temperature starts to drop. But then the radiation beam comes on, the radiation starts to deposit its energy, so the temperature rises again. But at this point, the feedback circuit within the calorimeter knows it wants to keep the temperature constant. So again, it reduces the power further, keeps the temperature constant with the radiation on until the beam comes off. So the way we measure the dose from this is we look at the electrical heating power that's been uh, taken out of the calorimeter when the beam comes on, and from this we're able to infer the radiation heating power and therefore the dose. So this enables to determine dose to graphite, which we then, of course, have to convert to dose to water, because that's the, uh, what's clinically interesting, because the body's mostly water, not graphite. So talking about the traceability in the dosimetry chain now to the clinic, I've picked the example of... Um, absorbed dose in a high energy photon beam, so for example radiotherapy. So here at MPL we would make measurements, as I briefly described, using our primary standard. And we actually use that to calibrate a set of three uh, NPL reference chambers. And these are, for those of you that know, there are 2611 iron chambers, and we do actually now manufacture those here. The reason we don't calibrate hospital instrument directly against our primary standard is because calorimetry is quite a complex and a time-consuming process. So we, we do those measurements in our own time and calibrate our reference chambers, and then hospitals send in their secondary standard, and we calibrate that against our reference chambers. So that's the, uh, the calibration chain um, for how that then goes out to the clinic. With your calibrated secondary standard, we would supply a certificate containing the instrument details on the front page and then a few pages of information and sort of general how to use this, uh, this instrument in good practice. Um, and then there would always be a table of results or a graph um, showing the calibration of that instrument. So a user then in their own beam can read off what their beam quality is and then determine the calibration factor for that chamber. So typically, in, in a radiotherapy department in a hospital, the secondary standard is used to calibrate what's called a field instrument, the chamber that's used on a day-to-day -day basis. And this would then be used to measure LINAC output and also the beam quality. So then this would be traceable back to us and used for all radiotherapy treatments that were delivered. So as Martin uh, said earlier, the, the, the chain out to, from NPL to radiotherapy is a very small one. So a few of the services we have that, that cover the radiotherapy, which I hope is most people's uh, area of interest from dosimetry here, um, we calibrate photon chambers for use in MV beams. We also include a cobalt-60 calibration. And we also do calibrations for 300 kV X-rays and very low-energy thin window chambers, which might be used for, for skin treatments. We calibrate electron chambers as well and also ophthalmic applicators, so small sources that would be used um, to treat eye tumours. We do an HDR brachytherapy calibration service as well, um, using an Iridium-192 radioactive source, 
um, calibrating both wall type and thimble chambers for this. And um, the code of practice for this has quite recently been published. And actually, all these codes of practice, MPL always has a representative on the, uh, the IPEM working group, so to, to give input into codes of practice that you use. Something else that's just slightly different that we do is, is um, there's a team of us that go into radiotherapy departments and carry out audits. So we essentially check that codes of practice are being implemented correctly. And we arrive with our own equipment and we make a measurement in the hospital beam, typically of beam output, beam quality, and also check the calibration of the field instrument. And we're looking for, for any differences. And um, in the vast majority of cases, agreement is, is better than 2% um, <coughs> between our measurements and, and those made by the hospital. And if there's anything that's outside that, it's usually because there's been a correction factor applied wrong. So it, it's, it's never anything serious. It's usually just a small, just a small error to put right. Um, the dosimetry group runs a, a popular practical course in reference dosimetry as well. Now this is aimed primarily at radiotherapy physicists, but anyone wishing to improve any practical dosimetry techniques would benefit too. So there's a set of introductory lectures, and this is given both by MPL staff, but also by an experienced hospital physicist in the relevant area. So we'd have uh, someone come and talk about MV photons in the clinic, whereas there'd also be an MV photon at MPL uh, talk as well, for example. So that covers um, the lectures, and then after that there's five practical section, sessions covering uh, the, uh, the areas listed there. And these um, are for small groups of people, and it's a chance for you to do what we consider to be an excellent dosimetry. So you learn a lot of good dosimetry techniques, and there's both an MPL member of staff and, again, a clinical um, member of staff there as well that you can ask any questions about anything to. So people tend to find it quite useful um, for improving dosimetry. So finally, I'll tell you a little bit about some of the research projects we have um, <coughs> occurring in dosimetry at the moment. First of all, a little bit about what's called EPID dosimetry. And for those of you that don't know or don't work in radiotherapy, an EPID is an electronic portal imaging device, and it's this panel found here opposite the head of, of a linear accelerator. Now, EPIDs were originally designed to be used for patient setup, so um, an, an image would be acquired by delivering a small <coughs> amount of radiation to check the patient <coughs> is positioned in the, correct, in the correct place before treatment. However, it was soon realised that the image that you get actually contains information about the dose that's being delivered. So we're working on, at the moment on a model to convert this EPID image into a two-dimensional full scatter dose distribution. And we want this to be both for pre-treatment verification, so delivering the treatment without a patient there, and then we want to be able to extend it to what's called in vivo dosimetry. So we'd like to be able to use that to um, measure the dose that was delivered to a patient during treatment. And this would be useful both to detect any gross errors that may occur and then act to remedy them, but also it will provide evidence of correct treatment delivery. So we'd like to be able to support the implementation of this in radiotherapy departments, um, partly because the... Uh, British Institute of Radiology produced a publication a couple of years ago towards safer radiotherapy, and that essentially recommends that all UK centres should be carrying out some form of in vivo dosimetry by 2012. And that's not too far away now. Um, so that, pro that project is, is active currently. We're also actually uh, world leaders, I believe, in uh, proton dosimetry. Now, for those of you that know or don't know about protons, protons actually exhibit uh, better dose characteristics than x-rays for radiotherapy. And if I just take the example of the graph here showing what we call a depth dose curve for both x-rays and protons, imagining sort of beams from each side, the depth dose of protons is such that there's a very sharply defined what's called a Bragg peak beyond which no dose is delivered. So if you consider the say that wanting to get <coughs> dose between the dotted lines, using x-rays and protons, protons is much more sparing outside of that, the dotted line region. So there's a lot, much finer cutoff of the dose. So we've been aiming to establish primary standards for protons. We want to improve reference to symmetry and support to symmetry both in the UK and abroad. Now hopefully there's a, a couple of proton centres that will be being built in the UK within the next few years. So we wanted to be, be able to be able to support the dissymmetry as soon as they were up and running. 
So we have done the world's first graphite calorimetry um, with proton beams. This is, in fact, the calorimeter here. You can see it's absolutely tiny. And we've actually done that at Clatterbridge, I believe. Um, at the, they have a proton beam up there, which is used primarily for eye treatments. Although we are building a new proton calorimeter at present. We've um, characterised alanine, the chemical dissimilar, for use in proton beams. And we've also developed Monte Carlo modelling capabilities for these proton treat facilities as well. And we do actually have a rather slightly more obscure new research programme, which is on a novel squid-based detector for micro dissimetry of iron beams underway at present um, as well, which again is more of the, the heavy ions area. This was um, the rotational therapy audit is something that's only just, just concluded within the last couple of months. So for those of you that don't know, rotational therapy is rather than radiotherapy <coughs> being given with a series of static beams, it's radiotherapy delivered in a continuous arc, sweeping arc of the LINAC. And we wanted really with this to determine a tolerances for rotational intensity modulated radiotherapy audit. So when, when we do the audit, what, what would we would consider acceptable, what's unacceptable, and also to decide on the best way to do a national audit um, of rotational techniques. So this was a collaboration between NPL, Royal Surrey County Hospital, IPEM, and our, the Radiotherapy Trials QA group. So there were representatives from each of those that went on 10 audits, which are, are listed there, starting with the London Clinic and finishing um, at Royal Surrey in August. And we made a series of measurements using, for those that don't know, the Octavius Phantom, which is this happy looking chap at the top. So we did measurements with a two dimensional array there. We also used ionization chambers and film, and also alanine, to do a series of measurements using, uh, everyone was using very similar plans, um, and then analyzing those, um, basically to try and find what tolerances we should allow for IMRT. And I believe this is, the analysis is continuing at present, and this should be published soon. But it's just another area that NPL is active in, in conjunction with IPEM. Okay, thank you. Finally, um, a little bit about our, our new primary standards we're developing at the moment. We've built a new uh, calorimeter for photon and electron beams, which is shown at the top uh, on the left here. And we've just started using that in our new LINAC in the last couple of months because our existing calorimeter is now fairly old, working absolutely fine, but we wanted to just change the design slightly and improve that. So we've just been making the initial measurements with that calorimeter, and it's looking very promising at this early stage. The proton calorimeter, the new proton calorimeter we've designed as well, is just a smaller version of this calorimeter. We've also had the world's first HDR brachytherapy calorimeter finished recently, which is this... Uh, this calorimeter shown here, so a body of graphite and the radioactive source, the catheter for brachytherapy would be placed into the calorimeter and the source put in it. And the first measurements of that hopefully will be being published before too long. And it's only being built at the moment, but there's a very unusual looking calorimeter at the bottom here, which is for use in small field um, radiotherapy or intensity modulated radiotherapy. And I believe this, this calorimeter is only this sort of size. So it will be very exciting to get that one up and running because that's quite different to uh, any calorimeters we've built before. Well, I hope that's uh, given you a bit of a, a broad overview of the work that we do in dosimetry, particularly for radiotherapy. And you will be seeing the LINAC and have a chance to ask a few questions um, on the talk because I think all the groups are coming there. Um, I should add, if you have any questions or anything else you'd like to know um, that we don't answer today or you think of something later, if you email dosimetry at mpl.co.uk, any of us in the group will pick that up and, and we'll always reply to you. So thank you very much.